Welcome to Creative Spirit Gathering. This is your place for exploring and expressing what is on your mind and your heart in an art journal format. I'm your host, Reverend Jen Hutchins, founder of Unity Arts and Ministry, and I am so glad that you are here today. Today, we are leaning in to faith. Not just any old faith, but monumental faith. We are getting big with our faith today, so I hope you are ready to explore faith on the page using any materials you like today. So whatever you have on hand, whatever your heart is calling for you to explore with, uh, today's the day just to play with it, explore with it, see what happens. Um, I'm going to tell you up front, I've got glow in the dark glitter glue with me. Um, so glow in the dark faith, people. That's what we're talking about today. So I'm going to start off by sharing with you, uh, not my journal page, something else, a rock. I want to share with you a rock. This rock happens to say faith on it. Um, over the weekend, we hosted a Kindness Rock paint party. We've got a Kindness Rock garden at Unity Village um, on grounds there that the arts ministry helps to um, maintain rocks for inspirational stones. And during our party, um, we had several people painting and after the event, I stayed after and was chatting with a friend and we were both just you know, sharing things that were on our heart and some things that, that truly we wanted to lift up in prayer, lift up um, in faith. And as we were walking back out to our cars, right, we get down the elevator, we're walking out to the parking lot and I nearly tripped over this stone. So somebody who had left before us must have accident accidentally dropped this stone. But of all the messages, I literally almost tripped over faith. And what a beautiful reminder, you know, when exactly when I needed it. And so now I have this really bold, beautiful reminder of faith sitting on my studio desk. Um, so when those things, you know, life, those things happen that kind of throw us off kilter a little bit, that feel in disharmony or dis-ease, of our truest, highest good, we can lean on faith. And literally when we forget that faith is there for us, faith will show up in ways to remind us that it is still there, that we always, always have access to faith. And whether it's faith in a higher power, faith in the universe itself working on your behalf or faith in yourself to do the things that ought to be done by you, to do the things that are calling to you, from your heart to do. Sometimes, right, those things feel so big. Those challenges feel so big. And we forget all the things that came before it that remind us of how faith has carried us through. Every single one of them, right? We've been given exactly what we need, that resilience to keep moving forward. Now, as I was thinking on faith, right, and, and that literally nearly <laughs> tripping over faith, I remembered a story of overcoming one of my, my bigger fears through faith. And so I want to share this with you as a reminder that no matter how big our seeming challenge or obstacle, or again, that word, that disharmony, that dis-ease of body or spirit or mind, Whatever it is, no matter how big it is, our faith can overcome that. Our faith is stronger. It is monumental in size when we recognize it, lean into it. So as a child, one of my biggest fears was spiders. I was the type of kid that if a spider like was somewhere in the room, like it could be this big. If I saw it, I would freeze, frozen still, and just call for my mom to come and get it, and usually she would just squish it, flush it. <laughs> I don't do that anymore, so don't judge me. That's where I was, that's where I was. <laughs> but I'm sharing this because I had this opportunity to um, go on this painting retreat in France with the inspiration for the painting behind me came from. And I was staying at this old, it was actually an old convent that they had converted into an artist retreat beautiful, beautiful place. If you want details, let me know. They still host these retreats every year. Um, 
but I was staying in this small little room and after dinner went up to my bedroom and I sat on the bed and took out my book to you know do my my evening reading and meditation before bed and as I was sitting there I saw this movement out of the corner of my eye guess what it was yeah and I I do this right spider it was like this big <laughs> it was the size of my fist a big black spider crawling on the floor <laughs> of the room now I had a choice I could stay there in that tiny little space um, and just freeze or I could um, make my way running darting out of the room to go like ask for help so I did that option too <laughs> went and asked for help got my host he came into the room while I stood outside of it of course like letting him search the room and he went in looked all around came back out and said there's no sign of it it's probably gone into one of the one of the air ducts or something like that. And I'm thinking, yeah, you want to do something about that, right? And there, according to him, there was nothing he could do. And according to him, it was more afraid of me than I was of it. I sincerely doubt that, but <laughs> but I I I had nowhere else to go, right? Like this is what I'm stuck with. And so I realized, you know. I can either live in fear for the next 10 days every time I'm in this room, or I can try to make peace with the fact that there's this enormous spider in my vicinity. And, you know, I, I say that now, like it was like, oh, I clearly logically knew I could do this or this. Like I stood outside the door for a long time before even deciding I was going to step back in the room. <laughs> But I decided, right, that that I wasn't willing to let this fear be my only option. And so I turned to my prayer the way that, that I knew how at the time and sat there until eventually something greater than me, right, something greater than my fear, greater than Jen's fear, overtook me. And I was truly at peace with the fact that there was this big spider in the room. It was just this awareness of if it does show up, I'm still okay. I knew I was protected and I, I can't explain it beyond that, right? It was this level of faith in my own protection and in something greater than me has got this. And I, I didn't think about the spider again. Maybe like once in a while, like when I came back into the room, I'd just be like, hey, you here? Like I'm coming in, like, you know, kind of clear out. <laughs> But I never saw it again. It didn't ruin my trip. And what's amazing was not only did it change my faith in that moment around that one spider, but I then got to the point where I now, like, if I see a spider, we'll trap it and take it outside. So it was this shift of um, faith in a very, very different way. Now, full disclaimer, I will say I've noticed that my fear around spiders has started creeping back in. And so that's for me to look at, you know, what, where's this coming from? How do I um, lean back in, you know, the same way I did before, I lean back into prayer and really um, come to that sense of peace again, where I was, because I know it's possible. And I share this because I know we all have those moments where, it, where it's like, oh, I think I've, I've gotten over something and then it comes back and we need to revisit it. It happens for all of us. So when we are overwhelmed, we know that we can turn to this faith and we can turn to it again and again and again, no matter how many times it shows up, we always have this possibility to remember that faith is bigger than any seeming problem or challenge that we ever face. And again, it doesn't have to be faith that somebody else or something else is going to rescue us, but faith in ourselves, that we've got the strength, we've got the resilience to overcome whatever is before us. This leads me to my journal. I cannot tell you how many pages in my 30 plus journals um, are around the theme of faith, <laughs> whether it's in that recognition after the fact of, wow, look at how faith carried me through that, or 
in the moment when I'm still like in that mental headspace of working out a challenge or situation, trying to process it on the page and then faith takes over. Faith becomes the affirmation that tells me no matter what this is, it's going to be okay. So after my faith stone experience, I knew that I really wanted to focus on faith in my journal as well. And so I was approaching my journal this time around, not with the fear first, but with the faith first. And so literally this whole page is faith. It is like an ode to faith, a positive affirmation of faith and action in my life and my connection with it. So I started with this huge circle because as I said, we are talking about monumental faith today, right? Not just like maybe sort of kind of I've got faith, but I've got faith claiming it. And so it takes up the whole page. It is monumental in scale. And when we're talking about monumental art, it doesn't have to be um, a statue or an architectural building, right? Those are monumental, they're big in size but something can be big in scale, again, taking up the, that page itself. And oftentimes monumental things in art um, show up bold, um, maybe rounded or um, softly defined edges, not a lot of details in monumental art because it almost looks like a statue itself you know, on the page. It's something that holds a lot of weight. So my monumental scale, faith, was this big circle, right? Almost thinking of it as a seed itself. And inside that, I took my marker and I began to write my ode to faith. I won't read the whole thing, but I'll give you a sense of where I was going with this. Nothing is bigger than my faith. By faith, I climb mountains, I wrestle demons, I go on amazing adventures, I travel the world. I affirm my good. My faith is strong. My faith is monumental. And so allowing myself to lean in to that connection through writing. Then painting my blue, representing, again, that power of faith um, and some golds on the edges as well. And then this is where I got out my glow in the dark glitter glue. <laughs> my husband found this. I can't tell you where to get it. He found it like in a clearance rack somewhere um, for like a dollar or something, but it's so fun. It truly, it does glow in the dark and the bottle glows in the dark, which is really fun. So when I walk in my studio <laughs> at night, I've got yellow and pink, so um, they're pretty fun. But I thought, you know, when, when we're in that state of fear, like fear is often depicted as that darkness or even that, like, that sense of weight and that, that closure. So, Truly, that idea of the material representing this light that's going to glow even in the dark spaces um, felt really important to me. And so I was using that to kind of create this spiral around my faith and then used a blue string again, kind of that I was seeing it almost like as this path that I could follow, you know, to constantly come back to faith. Now, here's one of those life lessons that was happening my glue was like not coming out well. I was like squeezing the glue <laughs> to, to put faith on the page. And eventually I looked at it and I hadn't opened it all the way. This right here, this is your lesson. Make sure your faith bottle of glow in the dark glue is open all the way. Because as soon as I did, it was just that one extra little twist it like just squirted right out, like easy, easy, came right out. So make sure your faith bottle is wide open. Let it flow. Remember that it can glow in any dark space. And having a page like this, now anytime that I'm feeling overwhelmed by something, I can turn back to this and I can remember faith. And I can just remember this experience of processing faith on the page as well. So my invitation to you is to lean in, to explore your relationship with faith, to see how big is it? 
How monumental in scale is it when we really look at all that we have overcome so that whatever shows up, we remember my faith is bigger. In terms of scale, it is always bigger. And we can always have that faith with us. So let us take this, our rocks, our glue, our pages, all of it into our own hearts as we turn into a moment of meditation now. So first, adjust your body, right? So often we like hold ourselves tight, like that glue squeezing, <laughs> let it all go. Feel it drip down. Maybe let your hands loose by your side. Let them just hang there. Feel that weight off. Pull it off your shoulders. Give your neck a little gentle, gentle roll. Adjust your hips just a little bit. Notice if you're holding any tension there. And then with a breath, breathe in and on the exhale, release any other tension in the body. You're leaning into faith. Faith is stronger than any worry, any tension. Let it go. Let your hands find a gentle resting place on your lap if that feels comfortable for you. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. Take a nice, deep, cleansing inhale. Exhale. I have monumental faith. I have monumental faith. Let this affirmation seep into your mind, down to your heart, as we rest for a moment of silent meditation, breathing in the peace and the presence of faith. I have monumental faith. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. So we begin to bring our awareness back to this now present moment. We gently flutter our eyes open. We move now into our journal expressions, exploring, expressing from your mind and heart your personal relationship with faith. Enjoy the process. <laughs> 